Well, hello. Today we're doing a mockingbird, and I'm going to show you the, the base sculpture in the foam and the core wall. Okay, so there is no foam, it's core wall, and this is my reference, my, the mockingbird. It's just a printed copy, and that's the position I want. And it's a different kind of bird, but see how he's looking down? What I want to do is, you know, put it on top of the frame, looking down at its feather. People seem to really like that one, so this is another one that I'm making. I have the beak that's made, of course, of Sculpey, and there's a wire in there, and then I'm going to, you know, curve it around so when I, you know, knit the wool around that wire, it holds it in place and I don't have to glue the beak in there. It's just... I'm not a big on glue, so I like it right all knitted in there. And there's the core wool I'm showing you from uh, Living Felt. And I've tried using the other wool. This just has the right texture you need in order to sculpt the base form. And of course there's stuff in there all the time, so you know, you gotta watch that. Sometimes, you know, it just gets in the way, you gotta pick it out of there. And, uh, you know, it'll stick out if you're in a, you know, a detailed area, so it's best to pull all of those out. I'm going to start by uh, putting the wool around my wire on my sculpty beak. You know, you bake the clay and sculpt it into a uh, mockingbird beak and uh, with the wire on it and now I'm going to use my uh, yellow needle which is finer detail um, that way I can work around the wire in there you know I don't know if you can see that but it's telling you on the back of each card it shows you you know what needle does what and um, like this needle here, see I've got yellow on it. That's my fine needle. That's my favorite needle. The other one is a spiral needle. I don't know, it's good when you're making big items, but for smaller things, uh, I like the yellow needle or the green needle. This one is a, I don't know, it's, it stabs too deep. And, and it can give you a texture, so when, when you're working with it, maybe if you want a texture in your piece. It does push down more well, wool a little quicker, so sometimes you can start with that to get your shape or to compress the wool faster. And then I'll, I'll move to the uh, yellow needle. I like the yellow needle. So I'm just shaping the head. I'm going to speed it up here, you know. Because, you know, it takes a little while to shape the head. Uh, the beak sets the marker, so to speak. You know, if you know where your beak is, then you can, uh, you know, measure where your eyes are going to go. And I'm constantly turning it so that it's round and, you know, it starts to look like the head of the mockingbird. And I add and compress wool and uh, get it to the shape that I want and you want to work all your sides so that uh, you know it's not flat on one side or lopsided or whatever it's a symmetrical bird head and I check for that beak to make sure it's nice and sturdy in there I'm going to add some wool and then uh, you know I got to put a chin in there as well too and it's just keep poking it and I'm using my yellow needle and to get it the way I want it to look. Now I'm going to figure out, you know, where the eye is going to go. So I'm just going to, you know, poke it where I think the eye is. And you know, the eye is not that far away from the beak, so that really makes a big difference. If the eye is not in the right spot, it's going to throw your whole bird off. And uh, check it from the front to make sure it looks right from the front. 
and it looks right looks right on either side and that makes uh, the bird look more realistic you don't want a bug-eyed bird or an eye that has or a bird that has too big of eyes and uh, it's a nice uh, expression on the bird and believe you me I've pulled many eyes out of a bird because it wasn't in the right place so here's a tip is uh, you know set your bird eye in the wall and get it recessed into the head and um, you know build up the the brow and then glue it later you know don't glue it right away because it's harder to move once that glue sets up plus you can't poke your needle through the glue so do it and then glue it hey that rhymes well it seems to me that uh, the bird head looks pretty satisfactory and uh, now it's going to be time to work on the rest of the body so since I want it in this shape of the bird looking down I'm going to check my reference so the bird has his neck coming down and the body goes at a different angle the best thing to keep doing if you're not sure is you know lay your wool right on your reference and see if it looks anything like the bird you're doing and if you do that you can needle felt anything it doesn't matter what it is it, uh, you know uh, you can needle felt people you can needle felt dogs or cats and practice your drawing because if you can draw you can sculpt it's just all the way around is what you're doing and once you do one side then you want to match the other side and then the bot the underside comes together so it's like you know driving with your headlights on you can't see where you're going but you see a little bit as you go and then before you know that you're at your destination and you can always cut away wool or you could add wool or you know whatever whatever you can think of you could put a hat on the bird or you know if something isn't right you know be creative make it work for you but don't throw your work away try to figure out what you can make out of it oh here's the piece uh, robin versus mole and that's an earthworm and you can see the mole in there so i marked where i'm going to sign my name i'm signing it on the left since the mole is on the right and that's the foam board I have cut and put in the back of the frame and so I sign my name in pencil I try to keep all my pencils sharp when I'm signing my name and then on the back I'm going to title it uh, Robin versus Mole and then uh, I'm going to write needle felt sculpture this was a request um, from a woman who saw our artwork and uh, she purchased online so um, you know that would be a great thing to do is just take orders online and then uh, we wouldn't have to travel anywhere but I do like uh, doing the traveling shows it's a lot of fun to meet people I'm gonna shape the body I'm speeding this up like real fast because it's a lot of condensing of fiber so there I am uh, I pulled the wool and I'm shaping body and as you can see I just keep turning it I've got the reference right there and uh, you know, shaping it all around we are working feverishly to uh, prepare for our uh, Inman Park show in Atlanta I think it's April 22nd and 23rd so next weekend today is uh, 
Saturday before Easter. So next weekend we'll be in Inman Park in Atlanta, Georgia. It'll be the first time at that particular show, and I hope it goes well. We'll have our needle felting uh, sculpture and also our transhumanism sculpture with a uh, bird on the shoulder or in the hand. You can check that out on the website as well. And uh, it should be exciting. At least I hope so anyway. I hope the weather's good. We got a new dome tent. And uh, It'll be, uh, we'll be using that at this particular show. They also do a house tour there. So as you can see, the bird is uh, starting to come together. And, you know, shaping it. Kind of outline the uh, wings on either side. I want to have his neck, you know, craned down look, so it's looking at a feather when I get it on top of the box. And birds quite have quite a belly. That's that side. Once you get this thing formed, it's hard to change the form. I've been putting wire up inside the birds, and then, you know, it makes it opposable. And that works really well, too. You have to be careful not to... Uh, poke the wire with your needle or you're going to snap some needles, but I always try to make sure I have plenty of spare needles on hand. Sometimes they last a long time, and sometimes you, you break them one, two, three right in a row, but they're not very expensive, but they are sharp, I will say that. And those are little wings I've got on there. Many times I do them separately and then attach them because then you're not compressing the bird down flat. All right, well that wraps up this episode. We'll see uh, part two of the Mockingbird. I'll be adding the feet and putting the tail on. And remember, this is just doing the form of the bird getting it ready to put all the color wool on and uh, you know bring this thing to realism so see you on the next one